guys, it's Kira and welcome back to another reading vlog. It is currently Friday morning, I'm just enjoying a lovely cup of coffee, which is kind of a plot twist in and of itself if we're completely honest, because if you guys have been around for more than a couple of vlogs, you will know that I am an absolute tea addict. I love tea with my whole heart. It's kind of part of my identity, to be honest. I mean, it's even in the intro of my YouTube videos with me holding a cup of tea. I get tea advent calendars at Christmas time. I just, I'm obsessed with tea. But recently, I still love tea. I just wanna put that out there and get that cleared up before we have any confusion. But recently, I've just really been feeling coffee. I just have been wanting coffee all day, every day. Probably not so great in terms of caffeine consumption, but it's just delicious and I'm really loving coffee. So now I'm like a, a multi hot drink kind of person because I'll like alternate throughout the day, have a coffee in the morning and then a mid morning tea and then a lunchtime coffee and then a mid afternoon tea. And it's actually quite fun because it means you get to try even more different hot drinks and enjoy the full spectrum of flavor that is out there to enjoy. I'm also mixing things up as well because I'm normally an oat milk person 100% of the time, but as we may know, cost of living is on the rise. So at the moment, I'm trying to be a bit thriftier and pick different milks depending on which ones are on offer. So today, I just got the Tesco own unsweetened soy milk and I made my morning coffee with it and it is delicious. So on the whole, we're all about change at the moment, embracing new things, and I'm really enjoying it. On the subject of change, let's dive into reading because I'm also someone who typically only likes to read one book at one time, but this weekend I'm gonna be spreading my time between three books, all of which are quite short and quite different from each other. So I feel like they have something in each of the books to satisfy every single mood. So without further ado, lots of books to talk about, so let's dive in. The first book is a mystery, kind of a thrillery style book, and I think it sounds super interesting. It's called A Town Called Solace by Mary Lawson. I'd never heard of this, but the cover just gripped my attention when I saw it in Waterstone, so I read the blurb and that just sold me. So the blurb says, Clara's rebellious older sister is missing. Grief-stricken and bewildered, she yearns to uncover the truth about what happened. Liam, newly divorced and newly unemployed, moves into the house next door and within hours gets a visit from the police. Elizabeth is thinking about a crime committed 30 years ago, one that had tragic consequences for two families she desperately wants to make amends before she dies. I feel like this just sounds super up my street in the sense that it doesn't sound like a very um, horrific or gory kind of thriller. Instead, it sounds like it dives more into the mystery side of things. But in the sense of the mystery, we obviously have three main characters potentially looking at multiple timelines with the event that happened 30 years ago. And I just feel like it sounds very multifaceted and very layered and I'm so here for that because I love when mysteries just keep you guessing and keep switching between different styles and perspectives so you have no idea what's gonna happen so I'm very excited about that one the next book is more so a literary fiction kind of like slice of life style book which I am also a big fan of and it is called assembly it is a super short book but again it sounds really interesting because it sounds as though it's not really a super plot driven novel instead it's a novel that really really dives into dissecting characters and basically exploring like what makes humans humans. So again, I'll read the blurb because it sold me and sounded super interesting. So, come of age in the credit crunch, be civil in a hostile environment, step out into a world of go-home vans, go to Oxbridge, get an education, start a career, do all the right things, buy a flat, buy art, buy a sort of happiness, but above all, keep your head down, keep quiet and keep going. The narrator of Assembly is a black British woman. She's preparing to attend a lavish garden party at her boyfriend's family estate, set deep in the English countryside. At the same time, she's considering the carefully assembled pieces of herself. As as the minutes tick down and the future beckons, she can't escape the question, is it time to take it all apart? Assembly is a story about the stories we live within, those of race, class, safety and freedom, winners and losers, and it is about one woman daring to take control of her own story, even at the cost of her life. I just think that line about considering the carefully assembled pieces of herself sounds so interesting because it really just sounds like a book that is going to dissect exactly what it is, all of the internal and external factors that go into making us who we are and 
dictate what we can and can't do and it just sounds very very intriguing it's only a hundred pages it's a hundred exactly so quite short in the grand scheme of books but it sounds like it's going to try and do quite a lot and I am very excited about it and then finally a very fun light-hearted trashy romance continuing on from my last vlog which was trying to see how many Bridgerton books I could read in one weekend I managed to make it through to book four last weekend so I've now made a start on book number five which is called two Sir Philip with Love. This is Eloise's story for anyone who is invested in the Bridgerton series as much as I am and Eloise is the second eldest girl in the Bridgerton family but she's the fourth sibling overall and so she hasn't like had too much pressure to get married I suppose in the sense that she like falls a little bit further down the family line but still there has been pressure to get married and she has somehow managed to get away with not accepting any marriage proposals and so at the point of this book she's 28 years old and essentially in the sort of um, Regency era is considered a spinster. She doesn't have any interest in accepting anything less than perfection from a marriage partner because she already feels very happy and satisfied with her own life and so she doesn't feel the need to accept anything just because it's what society says that she should. But at the beginning of this book she starts a correspondence with Sir Philip and things start to unfold in her mind as she starts to consider maybe she has found her perfect match. So I'm really excited about this one. Eloise is is one of my favourite Bridgerton characters from the series. I think she's so interesting. So I'm excited to see where it goes. So those are the three books that I have on the go this weekend. Very different, but equally excited for all of them. But as is the case at the start of most of my reading vlogs, I don't actually have any time for reading right now because I'm just going to gulp down the rest of this coffee and then I'm heading out for brunch. It is Em's birthday today, she's turning 24, which being 24 myself I think is quite a good age to be. Um, and to celebrate we're going out for brunch, which I'm super excited about, and then after that we're going pottery painting. I can't wait, although I'm slightly apprehensive because I am not an artistic person. In my head I am, I have so many creative ideas for things that I think would look great on paper, but then my actual skill set that I can physically translate that from my mind onto paper, or in this case onto pottery, it's just not there, there's a disconnect. So I need to really think about making something that's not too complicated so that hopefully the end result actually looks good. So that's the plan for today. I'm gonna to finish this off and run straight out the door so I'll catch up with you later on. I met an old man I said, tell me your story Got an open and wrote something for me. Then he kept walking on down the road, and I watched him disappear like smoke. And I thought I'd just seen a ghost Then I looked down at what he wrote He said, son, when you grow up you'll be fine I know you've got questions on your mind Life is gonna happen one way or the other Friday, although it has definitely disappeared faster than I could keep up with. Brunch was delightful. I got myself a like banana, strawberry, raspberry, mango smoothie bowl with granola on top. And then I had a coconut milk latte and it was so, so delicious. I didn't have a huge amount of choice at this place. There was only, I think, three vegan options, which were 
the smoothie bowl I chose a like a blue spirulina smoothie bowl and then avocado on toast to the classic vegan option so even though there wasn't loads of items that I could get the smoothie bowl was exactly what I fancied and just reminded me because I haven't had a smoothie bowl in ages that they are so so good and I definitely need to make them more often so that was wonderful pottery painting was so much fun I decided in light of my lack of artistic skill set to go for something very very simple so I took inspiration from the colours on Taylor Swift's Lover album and kind of did like a watercolour-esque vibe with some stripes so it kind of went like pale blue, lilac, pale pink and kind of like did that all the way up to the top and then I did little tiny dots of those colours at the base of the cup on the inside. It takes about a week for them to get fired and like you know completed but I'm so excited to go and pick it up and see what it looks like because as we all know based on my conversation earlier this morning I'm a big hot drink person so a mug was the ideal thing for me to paint and I'm super excited to be able to use a mug that I have painted myself but now that I'm home Jay and I have had dinner because it is now um goodness me it is 20 past six in the evening, so today has absolutely disappeared. We've had dinner and I've started reading Assembly by Natasha Brown. I have started and almost finished it, to be perfectly honest, because it's so short. I'm on page 61 and it has 100 pages exactly, so I'm over halfway. And like I suggested earlier, and my prediction was that this was going to be very much just a slice of life kind of character focused novel rather than really plot focused. And that is exactly the experience I have had so far, because rather than really sort of having a linear or cohesive timeline, it is more, I guess, the way that I would describe it would be a collection of observations, of experiences, and basically they're like evaluating experiences and reflecting on what they might have meant, particularly in this book on the subject of like race and inequality. So we have a young woman here in this book who is extremely successful or accomplished. She has been to an Oxbridge University. She is obviously very intelligent, but she is facing this adversity in the workplace where people basically are accusing her or treating her as someone who's only there to fill a diversity box rather than accepting the fact that she is there on her own merits for being intelligent, educated and accomplished. So it's a very interesting look into that but it's also I guess a bit of a detached narrative because of the fact that it is just kind of looking at like a few isolated experiences of this woman and her life rather than really telling you a story. So the little sections are interesting but I think in the way that they're told and the way that they are so snappy and don't necessarily link to one another it does have an almost memoir -y kind of vibe to it in the sense that it does just feel very um I guess like um, anecdotal is the word I'm looking for and just like it's yeah telling someone's experiences in almost like a matter-of-fact way not really like evaluating them but just reflecting on what has happened so I'm finding it very interesting and I'm definitely gonna be able to finish this one this evening so with that said I think I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea get myself an evening snack and then carry on reading this one I'm so so tired right now because we got up at four o'clock this morning which is as horrific as it sounds so although it's only 20 past six i'm so ready for bed so i'm definitely going to finish this book before going to bed but then i'm going to see i might be able to read some of my bridgerton book before going to sleep or i might be absolutely exhausted so time will tell but for now it's me in assembly and i'm going to try and finish this one before going to bed <laughs>
Good morning guys, I'm very happy to say that I'm feeling fresh as a daisy today and I had just the most wonderful sleep which was so, so needed because as I think I mentioned when I was talking to you about assembly last night, Jay and I had to wake up at 4am yesterday which was because Jay was starting work at 6.30 and we had to make sure that we had time to go to the gym, come home, get ready. I had to drop Jay off at work because I needed the car for the day and then that just meant that we had to get up unbelievably early and 4am is just as terrible as it sounds. I feel like it never gets any easier. We don't have to do those early wake-ups that often but whenever we do I despise them. But I despised it even more yesterday than normal because I had just been away for two days for a work trip in London which was really really fun but obviously had a bit of train traveling and just like didn't sleep so well on the night that I was away so in general I really could have used a good sleep and instead I had to wake up at 4am. But today we did not have to get up that early Early, which was lovely so we had a beautiful sleep I think I got in bed at like half eight and really enjoyed myself so I've woken up this morning feeling so much more energetic and the weather is matching my mood currently because it is super sunny very cold but sunny all the same and I'm taking that as a win I did manage to finish off reading assembly before I went to sleep last night which I'm very happy about because I really enjoyed this book it was super interesting and very very different in terms of the writing style than anything that I've ever read before because like I said it was written in a very matter of fact anecdotal kind of reflective way and it didn't feel like you were reading a story which I think added to the authenticity of what was being told through the pages because it felt almost as if you were just hearing insights into someone's real life rather than reading about characters on like a linear narrative that's going to end really like um happily essentially because I think that's what we expect from a lot of books and this book definitely wasn't that. I gave it four stars in the end rather than five and that is because despite enjoying the reflective and almost like very snappy and I guess like um what's the word I'm looking for fragmented writing style throughout the rest of the book I felt like the ending was a little bit too abrupt in the sense that it didn't tie things together in the way that I was hoping for I was more than happy to read about all of these reflections and very small segments of narrative throughout the rest of the book that kept swapping from one bit to another and I found that really interesting but what I think would have been just like a tiny bit better would have been if all of those things could have kind of come together to make a bigger point or like to kind of like make a reflection on the narrative as a whole in the conclusion whereas actually it just ended very abruptly and that was it but on the whole I really did think it was a really um sort of important book to read because it made so many like very relatable reflections on just the way that society either allows success or limits success for certain people dependent on so many different factors obviously race was a big discussion in this book but also like culture and socioeconomic status are all things that this book kind of dives into and explores how that impacts you as a human and basically like gives you that channel for which you have to follow and there's only so much you can do to kind of change that path that society sets for you so i think it was really really interesting and i would definitely recommend it especially because it's so, so short, very digestible, but really, really impactful. So finished that one, had a great sleep, and then I started doing some more reading of Bridgerton this morning, specifically of To Sir Philip With Love, which is Eloise's story. Now I was about 35 pages into this one from reading that on the train on my work trip the other day, but I'm now on page 99 of this book and I think it's really fun. It's quite different to the previous Bridgerton book that I read which was number four in the series and that was Romancing Mr Bridgerton and if you've seen my vlog reading as many Bridgerton books as I can in one weekend you'll know that I quite enjoyed this one in the sense that it felt more like the TV show than some of the other books because instead of just focusing really on one sibling it brought in the sibling who was Colin in this story but also the Featherington family through Penelope and also just like lots of the Bridgerton siblings I felt like had time to shine in this book so it felt like more of an ensemble cast book rather than one that was just focused on one main character and I did really enjoy that it was quite fun but for Eloise's book we've definitely got a bit more of that traditional hyper focus on one sibling in this narrative and I think this works well for Eloise because it's actually a very different story altogether because it's not taking place in the midst of society like all of the other books have done and Eloise is not in the ton or out trying to find a husband in the traditional way that we have seen throughout the other narratives and instead she has got away to I think the Gloucestershire 
um, countryside to go and see Sir Philip and basically pragmatically the two of these adults are just deciding whether or not they get on well enough and are compatible enough to get married basically but it's kind of like a romance that's taken all of the romance out of it and so it's very like um I guess logistical and like very practical way to approach the theme of marriage and I feel like that suits Eloise quite well and just the fact that she is not someone who has traditionally enjoyed the society sort of vibes of romance I feel like this definitely feels more like her I'm really enjoying because it's such a practical sort of courtship seeing the like way that they're trying to get to know each other I feel like there's definitely a level of humor there and also Sir Philip has two children twins called Oliver and Amanda and they are absolutely terrors that are just like wreaking havoc on Eloise and trying to sabotage the relationship but coming from such a big family and having so many siblings of her own she is really entering into that kind of like banter between them and definitely isn't the sort of woman who's just gonna like run away because she's scared by these children so I'm really enjoying it it's a lot of fun and I do love Eloise as a character so I'm loving getting to see her shine in this book now in terms of today I have only one plan and that is to go to a yoga class which I'm doing right now I'm just about to leave and then the rest of the day can be spent on reading. certainly glad to be back inside my warm house because as I mentioned earlier aside from my yoga class I didn't have any plans for today so that class finished at around midday and then I had the entire afternoon to fill and basically nothing to do other than sitting inside and reading and sitting inside for the entire afternoon on my own reading just felt like a waste of what was a beautifully sunny spring afternoon so instead I decided to take myself out and do some outdoor reading which was lovely because it was as I mentioned a very sunny day there are spring flowers everywhere and it was really nice to just like get outside for a change of scenery however it was very windy and the temperature was chilly I think it's about eight degrees celsius today which is not horrifically cold it's not so cold that you're gonna freeze to death sitting outside but it's also not warm enough to kind of be comfortable when you sit still which is obviously what you do when you're reading but I braved it out took myself a nice little coffee in my keep cup to keep me warm and I managed to get through quite a bit of my Bridgerton book which I'm really really loving. I think this might be my favourite Bridgerton story so far and it's definitely living up to my expectations which is wonderful because going into this series when I kind of made my little reading challenge last weekend I was thinking that my two favourite stories were likely to be either Benedict or Eloise because from watching the show the last couple of years they have been my favourite two Bridgerton siblings to see and particularly in season one I loved seeing their interactions with each other because I feel like they were both kind of 
maybe not quite black sheep of the family, but maybe had slightly different ambitions to what was expected of people in their station. And I really liked that little bit of camaraderie and banter between the two of them. And I just absolutely loved that. So last weekend when I read Benedict's story, I loved it so much and it absolutely lived up to my expectations. It was wonderful. And then this weekend, Eloise's book is doing that exact same thing for me because I just think it is such a great story. Very like unconventional in terms of romance as I mentioned earlier it's not like a classic young love courtship romance but I feel like the unconventional nature of it is just so in keeping with Eloise and her character and I just am really really loving it I think just this like constant back and forth and gradual like getting to know each other and understanding each other that we're seeing between Sir Philip and Eloise is just really heartwarming and there's almost something just like really comforting about knowing that they're not rushing into this relationship that they're taking it really steadily and like weighing up their options because they're obviously far more mature than some of the other characters that we've seen kind of like going into these romances and love matches and while those are stories that I also love reading this one just feels very Eloise I think and I'm just loving it so definitely going to be doing some more reading of this later however I do think I'm going to make a start on the other book that I was going to read this weekend which is A Town Called Solace because I haven't made a start on this one yet and I really really want to see what it's all about because this is the mystery of the weekend and I haven't really heard anyone talk about this book I just saw it and like the cover so I'm going in with very few expectations but very excited to see what happens so that is what is on the agenda for me for the rest of today a little bit more reading gonna have some dinner with Jay and then yeah see where the evening takes me but if we're honest and if we know me it's probably gonna take me to an early bedtime because that is just who I am Somehow it is now Sunday morning, but as promised, I did make a start on a town called Solace yesterday. So I have now finished one book this weekend and I'm part way through two others. I am specifically 45 pages into this one, which has given me one chapter from each of the three protagonists' perspectives. And they're actually a little bit more connected than I was expecting at this point in the story. I kind of thought we might get like three very individual characters and then potentially a mystery would bring them together. But actually they're fairly linked right from the beginning. And I've also been a little bit surprised by like the ages of some of the characters. So first of all, and the most surprising is Clara, who on the back, says Clara's rebellious older sister is missing and so I knew that she was obviously a younger sister but I hadn't anticipated that she was going to be an actual child and at the point of the book beginning she has a chapter where she's kind of like looking outside and waiting and hoping for her sister to come home or hoping for her older sister to kind of like send a message to let her know that she's okay and Clara is only eight years old at this point so she's a lot younger than I was expecting and I'm wondering if it's going to jump forward at all or if it's going to stay with her at that age so that was a surprise and then we have Elizabeth, who is an elderly lady who has just been taken to hospital. Um, Clara knows her because they're neighbours and Clara is looking after this woman's cat while she's in hospital. And then we know that Elizabeth used to be friends with or I guess have like a maternal relationship with a younger boy who she was neighbours with many many years ago and then this man Liam makes up the third protagonist so already these stories are very connected but there's an air of mystery in the sense that Elizabeth and Liam haven't seen each other or spoken in decades and then they've come back into each other's lives and it's all just starting to feel very mysterious now that's exactly what I was hoping for because this is a mystery but it's already more mysterious from the very beginning than I was anticipating so I'm excited to see what happens um, and I'm hoping to read quite a bit of this book today. It's not a very long book, it's 188 pages long so not massive and definitely one that I can make my way through quite a bit of today I think alongside of course reading some more of Eloise's book from the Bridgeton series but as of right now it is a beautiful day yet again. I'm sorry if you get bored of hearing me say that but it is and so I'm going to go out for a little walk along the river and then come back and do some reading.
It is now Monday, Monday evening to be precise, and I've just finished my day of work and making some dinner, and I'm very happy to say that I have some good reading news to share with you. I also have some less good reading news to share, but we'll start with the good to keep things positive. And the good is that I just finished up with my read of To Sir Philip With Love, and this is now the second book in the Bridgerton series that I have rated five stars actually was quite surprised when I went on to Goodreads to rate this one because for me it was absolutely a five star read because I just loved the story so so much but so many people hate this one and I'm not quite sure why but people do not like it, they certainly don't like Sir Philip and they just do not rate this story highly but for me it was a good one and it is the second one that I said I've rated five stars, the first one of course being book number three which was Benedict's story and just both of those books, book three and then this one, book five, have just been so wonderful and while I really enjoyed the entire series those two just stand out to me so much and I think it's because they are slightly less conventional in the way that the romance unfolds and with that said all of the Bridgerton books kind Kind of show some kind of I guess messy or unconventional route towards a love match like they all end happily because that is what you get from romances but they're all kind of not a straight route towards love but I think with Benedict's story which was about a Cinderella situation so his courtship was with someone who wasn't of the like social class that he is in so it was very unconventional in that sense and then Eloise's takes place entirely away from society and instead is like her as a much older woman like she's only 28 so not old in the real scheme of life but in the grand scheme of like the ton and society at this time and the regency era she was considered a spinster so she's a much older woman and is marrying or I guess courting a widow who has two children of his own already and as I sort of mentioned before it's a very pragmatic approach to marriage which then eventually moulds into love and I just think the way that both Benedict and Eloise's stories are far less conventional than the others is wonderful and I loved it so very very happy to have finished this one. I'm excited to move on to the rest of the series at some point very very soon because um, I've now read about the five siblings who are the like main focuses of the show so far. So we've obviously had Daphne, who was the first story, Anthony, Colin, Benedict and Eloise, who were like the five oldest siblings. And those are the ones, of course, who feature the most in the show because they are older. But then there are three younger siblings, Francesca, who is next, then Hyacinth and Gregory. And because those are younger siblings, they haven't featured as much in the show. And I don't have as much of a clear, concrete idea about who they are as characters and like all of their different personality traits. So I'm excited to read those books because I feel like I'm going in to a story that I don't know what direction it's going to go in. I have no preconceived ideas. So that's very exciting. But that is for another vlog, not today. So that is my good reading news. A five star read is always cause for celebration. But my less good reading news is relating to a town called Solace. I've done a little bit more reading of this one today and I'm now on page 158, which is I think over halfway, but I'm just not loving it. It's mysterious and it's interesting but I feel quite disconnected from the characters and from the story as a whole like I'm somewhat intrigued to find out about the mystery that is connecting these characters but equally I just don't feel that invested in them as people and therefore my motivation to read isn't as high as I'd hoped and this is an unusual experience for me with mysteries because normally they grip me so much more but I don't know for some reason there's just this feeling of disconnect with this book that I just can't put my finger on so I am going to plow on and read some more this evening after I've had my dinner but I don't know what I'm going to be rating this one or if it's going to claw me back in the second half because it very well might but at this point I'm just not loving it.
Okay, so it's actually now Friday, so a week since I started this vlog and I've specifically waited to today to update you because I want to do a little reveal. But before I do, um, I just wanted to wrap up my thoughts on A Town Called Solace because I finished this one after work yesterday evening and I rated it three stars because I think it was just okay. There were certain elements of the story that I thought were interesting and then others not so much. Specifically, I didn't really care about the missing girl. Like I felt like that was a bit of a storyline that was like just kind of thrown in at a certain point and then left at others and it just felt a little bit disconnected from the rest of the book and even the way that it was concluded I was like what is the point of this but then there was a history between Elizabeth the older character and Liam the guy who just like turns up in this small town and moves into a house and so I really enjoyed seeing the history of that relationship and finding out the mystery behind that and that was definitely the bit of the story that stood out to me but I felt like that could kind of have been like a whole book on its own and I think my critique of this one in general is that it was very short and tried to do a bit too much in a very short amount of pages and so none of it really felt like fully complete so it wasn't a terrible book by any stretch of the imagination but of the three books that I read this weekend I would say it was my least favourite but that brings us on to the big reveal so I started this vlog last Friday on Em's birthday and we went pottery painting hence why I've got Sarah stood here it's not just for the pretty face um but today we went to go and pick up our pots so I thought we'd do a little un unwrapping not an unboxing but without further ado let's see what we made <laughs> This is what I did. All right. Oh, I said something. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that's cute. It is cute. I really like the mint green. I like this. I think they turned out better than I thought. You can't really see the yellow things. I'm so glad I got rid of what was happening. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like a coffee and cake plate. Mug cake. Yeah, I like it. So that's yours. I definitely think the mint green is a nice colour. If I'd been creative, I would have done a cake here but I'm not so and then this is what I'm referring to as my Taylor Swift lover mug um is it the most artistically sophisticated piece of pottery no but is it usable and kind of cute yes I would say so mm. my favorite bit is actually the inside because I did some cute little polka dots right at the bottom um, but on the whole I think this is quite cute it's like very rustic with the paint strokes and that's kind of what I was going for I wanted it to look very just like um watercolory and I think it's pretty cute so on the whole cheers to us I'm pretty pleased with this. Mine looks like an avocado. It, oh, avocado. that would have, oh, that would have been such a good design. Okay, well, that's the next time. <laughs> God. Um, but with that said, I thought we'd come full circle, painted on last Friday, collected them this Friday, finished all of the books that I set out to read this week. So on that note, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.